you're pregnant. Mm. But you don't know what you're having yet. Yeah. So it's like, what do you do when you're pregnant? Well, you wait. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and you let the baby grow. Mm. And so you, you, you'll know what you're having and you can prepare yourself for it. Hey, welcome to Ask Pastor. I'm your host, Elijah. And if it's your first time with us, we want to welcome you. We created this segment where we ask Pastor Marco, or the lead pastor of New Life South Coast, any question that you might have. Um, and just get some wisdom, get some knowledge, get some practical tips to live out this life that we have. And if you've been tuning in with us, we want to welcome you and thank you for tuning in. If you're tuning in via podcast or through video, we want to welcome you again. You ready to jump in, Pastor? Let's do it. Let's do it. So uh, what do you think about daydreaming? What's your take on it? <laughs> well, nothing wrong with daydreaming as long as you're dreaming with your eyes wide open. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think there's something to daydream if it's leading us to think deeper about certain things. Yeah. Uh, I think dreams are a huge part of life, yeah. right? God speaks to dreams. But I, I think sometimes we can get caught up on the, the dreaming versus the actual pursuing of the yeah, dream. Yeah. You know, so I think we have to snap ourselves out of it once mm. in a while and give, you know, that sounds like an Eminem song. Yeah. Snap back, <laughs> back to reality. To reality. Um, but I think it, there's something to dreams, right? That, that it's it's God's will for us, but to not live there and not be practical about what I need to do to see those dreams come to pass. Oh. You know, not live in wishful thinking, yeah. you know? So, yeah. So, I, yeah. Do you think <clears throat> dreams are a catalyst to a movement somewhere? Absolutely. I think I think we need dreams, right? Because without dreams, then what's, what's life really? You know, mm -hmm. I think sometimes we need a dream to wake us up to the reality of the mundane. Mm -hmm. And I love the mundane because the, to me, your dreams come to pass in the mundane. Because a lot of times when we think about dreams, we just think about the final product of the dream. Yeah. But the reality is every dream has a process to it mm -hmm. to get to that, whatever that final product looks yeah. like. So I think it's, again, I have to keep reminding myself of that. Snap yeah. back to reality. What can you do today that mm -hmm. is going to add to that dream yeah. that you might have? Yeah. You know? So. How about Joseph and his dream? When do you know the dream is just a figment of an imagination or something that God is putting in you? I think I think when you walk with the Lord, Lord, He has a way of confirming His will okay. for us. Uh, if you like, you mentioned Joseph, right? What does Joseph say uh, when he meets his brother, confronts his brother who sold him to slavery and mm -hmm. all of that? Joseph realizes that in that process, which was a 14, 15 year process. Mm -hmm. He says, actually, wait, it was God all along, yeah. right? Because wherever he was, he, he did the best with what was in front of him. Mm -hmm. And I think God has a way of confirming his will when we're doing the best with what's in front of us. Mm -hmm. You know, like when he was a part of his house, he was a really good worker and that mm -hmm. stood him apart from everybody else. When he went to jail, he, he was on point and they like, propelled him to a better position. Mm -hmm. So he goes from the pit to the palace based on taking full advantage of what's right in front of you. And I think that's how God along the way confirms it, mm -hmm. right? That's why it's, it's critical to have, uh, you know, godly voices along the way oh. uh, and being in the word along the way, because you might think it's a setback, but it really is setting you up for mm -hmm. what he has for you. So I think God has a way of confirming to make sure that you know, like this, I'm with you on this. And just because something is hard does not mean it's not part of the process. Wow. And would you say you have to have a talent for the dream so they can meet, so you can live that out? So this question says, how do I find my purpose in life? I don't think I'm talented or gifted. I think everyone is talented. Everything, everyone's gifted. I think that's the part of the journey is to discover what, it, what has God put inside your view so that you can know uh, what you're more likely to produce out of mm -hmm. life, right? But from the beginning, God created Adam and Eve, and he said, be fruitful and multiply, right? In mm -hmm. other words, there's a purpose to yeah. your life. And a lot of times in that journey is, okay, what can I do to unearth what's in me already, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we have this book here, Purpose Driven Life. Um, I highly recommend The Purpose Driven Life by Pastor Rick Warren. It's a 40 day read, yeah. but it's powerful because it, it would help to kind of unearth what's in you already. And, and I love the tagline of the book is, what what on earth am I here for, mm. right? In other words, God wouldn't have you here if you wasn't, if you didn't have a purpose for your life. Yeah. So I think it's, you have to own in on creating pockets to, to figure out what the purpose is mm. and what my talents is, what my gifts are. And I think you don't arrive at it. I think you, you work towards it. Mm. So sometimes I tell people like, in our church, we talk about like join the mission, right? Yeah. Um, you may join a team. It does not mean where you're going to stay, but you got to start somewhere yeah. to kind of get the ball rolling to see yeah. like what's in me. Yeah. And sometimes you don't know what's in you until you try something. Yeah, you know sure. what I mean? Like uh, 
I've been following Christ for a little bit over 20 years, okay. and I've done most of the ministries in the church, mm -hmm. right? And it, because to me, it was never like God didn't say, behold, you're gonna be a pastor. I think, you know, as the journey progressed, you could begin to see like, what is God leading you to? Yeah. But you gotta do what's in front of you. Yeah. You know, I've done kids ministry, I've done youth ministry, I've yeah. done young adults ministry, I've done follow up ministry, yeah. guest ministry, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But all of it adds to the value of who you are yeah. and helps you to understand what's really in you. Mm. I think sometimes if you were just waiting to do one thing, you might miss it yeah. because it's like, hey, do what's in front of you and see what that leads. Yeah. You know? And did you feel like in your walk with Christ, especially as a younger Christian walking into more of your adult life, were people calling certain things out of you? Yeah. And that's the beauty, I think, of being part of a community mm -hmm. because other people begin to see things in you that yeah. you're not seeing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I remember way before we came to New Bedford, the plant, uh, in New Bedford, there were some 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 key voices in my life that would say, hey, I think you're going to be a, a, a great pastor someday. Wow. And I was like, I'm a youth pastor. I love it. Yeah. Like, this is, this is it. Like, yeah, this is yeah. my gig, <laughs> you know? And then eventually you begin to see, oh, wait, maybe God's calling me to something else, mm -hmm. you know? That's the power of community, yeah. right? Like, I talked about that on Sunday. Like, don't be a lone ranger because you might miss a lot because a lot of scriptures, she talks about you in plural. Right, like the whole yeah, community. Yeah. And the counsel of godly people is so powerful in helping you, and again, unpack what's already in you, because you might have blind sides, you're not yeah. seeing. Because the other thing too that could happen is you might think you're talented for something. <laughs> We've <laughs> seen those, yeah. Yeah, like I know for a fact God has not called me to be a worship leader. <laughs> <laughs> He's your great worship leader nonetheless. <laughs> you know what I mean? Multi-talented. But, I, but, I, but you know what's crazy? I've done worship leading in my church where I'm like, I lead, I help people into worship like Kirk Franklin does. I'll tell you <laughs> yeah. what to sing and I'll help you up, yeah. you know? But I'll never forget one day, I just had to be honest with my pastor and said, I told my pastor straight up, it's like, I don't think I should be in the choir. You know? <laughs> Cause I'm like, I want to just be involved. Yeah. I want to try everything. Yeah. But now I'm at a point that I'm like, I can deduct some things yeah. <laughs> and it's good for me and you yeah, as yeah. a church. <laughs> And then I shouldn't be in the worship team. So yeah. I think also that's the beauty of community mm -hmm. and people can be honest with you and help you understand like, hey, maybe that's not it for you, yeah. but it's a good thing you tried. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's not funny. You're still a great worship leader. Uh, I'm, cool. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say. <laughs> I hear you sometimes singing in my ear. I'm like, okay, Pastor. I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I got this question right here. Is it bad to have ambition or to want to be successful? I live in this world and I need to work with what the world offers in order to survive. How can I be in the world but not of it? No, I, I actually believe that you, God created you to succeed, mm. right? Again, going back to Genesis chapter one, he said, you know, be fruitful, be multiplied and rule, yeah. right? Take dominion in a sense. Um, I think we were created to succeed. Now, the, the, the difference is, is when my motives and my intentions are not aligned with God's will for my life, mm -hmm. that's when success could become detrimental to our souls. Yeah. Like the story that Jesus told about the man who he had a lot and he's like, man, I'm gonna build an extra barn and, and, and I'm gonna have so much. And then the scripture says, that the Lord says, well, fool, today I'm gonna take your soul. Yeah. In other words, what are you working for? Like, yeah. What is the point of your success if it's not to be a blessing, mm. right? Throughout scriptures, we see this pattern where God's like, I'm gonna bless you to be a blessing, yeah. right? He told Abraham, hey, I'm taking you out of here to bless you, but you're gonna be a blessing to many nations. Wow. And the struggle with Israel uh, later on is that they turn inwardly and mm. made it about themselves yeah. and they stopped blessing the world. Mm. And I think that's the difference of success, right? It's like, is your success pointing to something greater mm. and bigger where God is glorified and you're edifying people, you're helping people because yeah. of your success. Yeah. You know, I love hearing the story this week of, of the young man who won the MVP Super Bowl, right? Yeah. The, the wide receiver from the Rams. He's a believer, mm -hmm. right? And right after it, it says, you know, do it for a crown that lasts forever, yeah. right? But it's beautiful that like, he's succeeding in his arena, right? He's yeah. a football player and he's just reached the pinnacle of a Super Bowl yeah. and he's the MVP, but he's wow. giving God the glory because yeah. he understands like my success is to point to something bigger and greater, mm. right? So there's nothing wrong with being successful, nothing wrong with prospering. It's just that you hope and pray that is leading to something big, bigger and better. Even like people in the world who are successful will say, what is the point, yeah. right? Because if you stop asking that question, then something inside of you is dying, yeah. you know? So you can be in the world, but not of it by your ambition being pure and being mm -hmm. godly, being right that, hey, I know why I'm doing this. Yeah. And, and whether my success is in money or is in, or is in influence or is in fame, whatever it is, it's like, I want to point to something bigger and greater and I want to be a blessing to people mm -hmm. in the process. So yeah. again, nothing wrong with being successful. I think it, there's a weird like thing we need to untangle from, you know, following the Lord that, yeah. oh, the Lord doesn't want me to 
It's like, no, that's the scripture. Scripture says he wants you to mm. succeed. He wants you to be blessed. Some of the most successful people in the Bible were people that followed the blueprint, like yeah. Solomon. He's yeah. incredibly successful. David was incredibly successful. Um, Abraham. But the problem is, if you look at their lives, at some point when they drifted, they made it about themselves, mm. the success became detrimental to their souls. Yeah. Like Solomon even says, my favorite Old Testament book is Ecclesiastes, mm. right? Because it's like almost like his bio yeah. of how he did life. Like he's like, man, I chased women and I chased pleasure and I chased, you know, uh, money and I chased all of these things became meaningless. Mm. And there's a great line in there where he says like, in the message translation, he says it's like chasing wind. Wow. It's like you can't grab wind, right? But in the end, what does he say? He says, I learned this, but he's reflecting over the years. Yeah. It's like fear God, obey his commands, because that's the greatest thing you can do yeah. with your life. That his success was supposed to point to something bigger and greater. Mm -hmm. He made it about himself. Yeah. So again, nothing wrong with success is when we turn it and make it about us instead of yeah. that God has given us whatever success looks like to be a blessing. Yeah. And you just answered it, but I put language to the question is, how do you end that success? Because you're pretty, if you're looking out in, this church is pretty successful to God's standards, but it's also pretty successful reaching people. How in that success do you find a place to humble yourself? Because it's easy to keep going, like success to success, but how do you find a place that actually humbles you to remind yourself of that? I think it's, it's constantly remembering your why. You know, I talk about this a lot, right? What is your why? Why do you do the things that you do? And when you are off your why, you have to quickly realign yourself back mm. into it. You know, because we all can get caught up on yeah. bigger, better, greater, more money, more this, more that. Yeah. But it's like, why? Yeah. You know what I mean? I have to constantly come back to that why. And that gri ground, it grounds me mm. in my purpose that I believe God uh, put me on earth to do, yeah. which is hopefully to to expose as many people to Jesus as That's possible, right. That's right. right? And to help them connect with him, but continue to ask God to refine my motives and my intentions, mm -hmm. right? There's a great prayer in Psalms that I love and I pray it often. I pray it this morning. May the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, mm -hmm. right? So I have to constantly bring, uh, bring myself back to that motive, that intention yeah. is why am I doing this? Because there are times that in the journey you can get sidetrack and get yeah. caught on other things yeah. that is not really the heart of why God's called you to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to be careful with comparisons, yeah. right? Looking at other people and thinking, oh, they're more successful or they're more this, whatever. That's why I have disciplines. Like, I haven't been on social media for so long. Yeah. Part of that is, it's like, it, 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 people may think, oh, you, you're doing that because you have a problem. It's like, no, I like to anticipate problems. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, man, so it's like, hey, I don't need to be on social media all the time mm -hmm. because it leads to comparison. It yeah. leads to jealousy. Mm -hmm. It leads to, sometimes you just want to like, almost like flex your own muscle yeah, and show true. like, hey, look at me, look at what I'm doing. True. So it's like, why not, you know, maybe go back and deduct some things that are not going to help you stay in the right lane of what success yeah. looks like. Yeah. But even a greater thing for me is like, the people that are closest to you, are they being blessed by your success, mm. right? Because it's like, what would be the point wow, of good. doing all of that, but your wife is miserable, yeah. your kids are miserable, yeah. and they're not part of that success in yeah. a sense. Yeah. You know, especially in the ministry world where we're seeing this a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Great people are falling by the wayside yeah. and they're causing chaos in the process because mm -hmm. they lost the heart of success, which is yeah. a healthy marriage, healthy kids. That's way more, that is way more important yeah. than the projecting or what success is. And that applies to anybody. Yeah. In a business world, whatever it is you're trying to do, it's like start at home. Success yeah. is a healthy home. Wow. And so finding your why, did you sit down with, like you were talking about mentor or godly people around you, but also maybe your why, did y'all find a why, not just for the mission of the church, but also the mission of your family in to the church? Yeah, I am extremely thankful for, for Pastor Steve and Pastor Nancy, mm -hmm. um, because they helped to ground us in doing what we're doing, right? The power of having mentors. Yeah. Because when we felt the call, uh, they were there to help us kind of like unpack it oh. and also help us to to pray and teach us about God's timing. Mm -hmm. Because that's the thing with dreams, right? Yeah. Dreams, there's timing to them. Yeah. You know what's crazy about Joseph's story, right? He's in jail and he, and he tells the dreams to these, the cupbearer and the, uh, what's the other guy? The baker, yeah. right? But he tells the guy, hey, don't forget about me when you when you go back to the palace. The guy's like, oh, I, I, I won't. I got you. Well, the Bible says two years went by. Yeah. Totally forgot about Joseph. Mm -hmm. 
until the time was right. Mm. Sarah has a dream. And I was like, whoa, I remember now. There was a guy in jail that interpreted <laughs> the dream for me. Yeah. So there's a timing, right? Facts. And I think so it's important good. to have voices in your life that can help you discern the timing. Mm. And that, to me, is one of the biggest things that, that Pastor Steve and Nancy did for us, was uh -huh. really help us to like, hey, pull back. Like One of the greatest analogies that he ever gave me about all of this is he said, you're pregnant. Mm. But you don't know what you're having yet. Yeah. So it's like, what do you do when you're pregnant? Well, you wait. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and you let the baby grow. Mm. And so you, you, you'll know what you're having and you can prepare yourself for it. Yeah. And so that was an incredible analogy that helped me stay grounded. Yeah. And the other thing that I said earlier was we didn't neglect the, the things that were in front of us. We yeah. just kept doing what was in front of us wow. and kept praying for God's timing to release us. Mm. But I always said this. I said, I prayed. I said, God, I don't want to go unless you tell Pastor Steve it's time for us to go. Yeah. So, and I thank God that he gave me enough grace to honor that mm. and patience to honor that yeah. because uh, I don't think things would be the way they are if we didn't really trust that, that mm. there's mentors for a reason, there is timing for a reason, there's honor, there is integrity, there's character. Mm. All of that to me plays a role into whatever dream God has yeah. for you. For me, our dream is to build a church. For other people, it could be a business. It could be... Yeah just to have a great marriage, whatever it is, like trust that God put the right voices wow. in your life and trust the timing of all of it, Wow, you know? And so seeing the reality, I've always wanted to ask you this question, seeing the reality of that dream come to pass and getting that word, but embracing that mundane, were you doing what was in front of you, but still learning what's ahead of you? Mm -hmm. to, when you get there, kind of like, I right, know a little bit more. Now let me use this as I'm stepping into that. Yeah, I think it was really leaning into pastor's experience because i was like it really hit me and it may sound crazy but i was like man i have a pool of wisdom here yeah a resource right in front of me mm -hmm. he's done this been there done that why don't i just lean into that more? Wow. you know and so for me it was like being very intentional about going into his office and ask a lot of questions mm -hmm. you know i always joke with him i'm like i got my master's in ministry in your office yeah. because you've been there you've done that you've modeled what it looks like when, when we again call success for yeah. me it was like hey he's He's a man of God, a man of righteousness, yeah. loves Jesus, has faith, That's loves right. his family. You know, it's like, I want that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. In my own version, God. And so just being under that, under that mm -hmm. umbrella. And again, I think it's so hard, tough to teach that today because people, they feel something, they just go. Yeah. But it's like, man, why don't you honor where you are? And mm -hmm. the people that is right in front of you yeah. and take full advantage of it. And he still is one of my favorite people to talk to wow. because he's still there on this journey with mm -hmm. us. You know what I mean? So I think it's just like, can you honor what you are and the people that God has placed in front of you? Whatever that dream is, yeah. like trust that there's a timing to it though. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no shortcuts. Yeah. You know, shortcuts always lead to dead end street. That's right. Somewhere, that's right. you know? And it's good. I read a book not too long ago called The Proximity Principle by Ken Coleman. Hmm. And he talks about that. Like the thing you want to step into, surround yourself by someone who's far above, like a, a pool of wisdom. Yeah. And just pull on that and learn from it. That's why every year we, we, we try to go somewhere to learn, right? Mm -hmm. We just came back from the conference in Florida. And I purposely pray every year, God, where can we go to learn from people yeah. who are further on our journey than us, mm -hmm. right? Not just from an external standpoint of like, oh, look at what they've done, but yeah. like, no, what have they built with their lives? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that we good. can also glean from and learn from. So I'm always listening to people from that perspective. It's mm -hmm. not just what you're saying, but it's like, hey, what have you built with your life yeah. that says, man, that 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 will preach, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I think just being teachable, wanting to learn, wanting to grow. And again, it's really hard though, like trusting the timing and not and be patient to not rush the process. Mm, you sure. know? Awesome. All right, we got this next question. How do you overcome shame and guilt from your past? Mm. You know, it's interesting. The word shame, the first time used in the Bible was when Adam and Eve sinned against God mm -hmm. and they felt shame and they felt naked. Wow. You know, and the word there, naked, it wasn't necessarily just physical, but it was like something was missing, wow. something was lacking. So I think that that comes from a, some some brokenness somewhere, right? And sometimes that becomes an identity. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, if we don't uh, allow the Holy Spirit to come and minister to us. So I think the process looks like this. The first thing that God says to them and to us is, is where are you? Right? Again, God wasn't saying that physically, like, because yeah. God is everywhere. Yeah. But God was trying to check their soul in a sense, yeah. like, where are you? What's going on with you? Yeah. You know? So being being honest about where you are mm. you know in other words own the mistake or the sin whatever yeah. it is own it right but don't 
uh, embrace it, mm. right? So I own it. That's repentance, right? I need to repent. I need to turn away from this thing. I need to bring it to God. The other thing that's important, if, if we're not gonna let shame get the best of us, is don't just own it personally, but own it with the person or the people that you need to own it with, mm. right? Like, go and make amends if you need to be. Yeah. You know, a lot of times people say it's just between me and God. It's like, no, no. If you hurt someone, mm -hmm. you need to go make amends. Yeah. Go, 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 and do the right thing because Jesus said, then you will be blessed, right? And then the the next thing that's so important is you had to replace the shame with the word, mm. right? I will give you one word that I think is so important to speak over shame is Romans 8, 1. It says, there's now therefore no condemnation for those who are under Christ Jesus, right? right? So I need to declare that over me, mm -hmm. right? And I keep declaring it until I felt the release of shame into acceptance, yeah. into healing, into forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to keep doing it because uh, shame has such a hold on people sometimes that you have to keep unhinging it from your soul with mm -hmm. the word. You yeah, know what I mean? Right. So you got to replace it. So there's a daily confession that I need to make right. over my life. Like I have repented, mm -hmm. I've made demands, I belong to Jesus. Mm -hmm. No weapon formed against me will prosper now. So I have to keep reiterating that daily. So I say to this person, like, take those steps, repent, make amends, and declare the word of God over you until you feel released mm -hmm. from the shame and guilt. See, guilt is meant to lead us to freedom, That's right? Right. Healthy guilt. Mm -hmm. Unhealthy guilt is when you you allow that to now define you, and now mm -hmm. shame becomes your portion wow. as opposed to freedom. Yeah. Wow. And so let's let's say that person is finally received that, but their family is the collateral damage. And how do they walk out? So this question is, how do you represent Jesus to friends and family that have known the real you for so long? Yeah. I think it's you you have to lead by example. Like mm -hmm. you can't you can't try to make people believe you by forcing them to believe you when for so long you were modeling what you're yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. So I give you a perf a personal example of that is my dad. Like my dad would struggle with drinking. He's an alcoholic. You know, he was verbally abusive at times, even physical. It was a mess. Mm. Right. But my, when my dad made Jesus it was the greatest miracle I've ever met. But at first it didn't feel that way because mm -hmm. it's like for so long all I've seen was is his baggage in, yeah. in carnage that he had no leg to stand on to say like, all right, look, I'm, I'm changed. Yeah. So I give him credit because what he did was he just lived by example. He didn't yeah. try to force it on us. He didn't try to like make us, but he was wow. just like the way he was living, you can tell like, okay, he's a different man, mm -hmm. you know? And with time, time heals all things, yeah. right? Now you have a platform to use all those things that was hurting to become a healing thing. Wow. But that takes time, like, especially for people that's closest to you, like you, mm -hmm. they're not, concerned about what you have to say they're concerned about what you're doing right. so with with family members and those close to us you got to do it by example just let the way you're living and then and then pray for them to see that this thing is real mm -hmm. right but you can't force it because you have no leg to stand on like yeah. you now have to you're in a place you have to earn people's trust yeah again it's not a fun place to be but it's a healthy place if you allow it for time to take its course and bring mm -hmm. healing to the rest of the people that you've hurt for so long, wow. you know? And, and what would you say to someone who's enslaved themselves? Like, let's say, so we read a book called Bo's Cafe, purely fictional, but it's somewhat in reality too, yeah. where a married couple, the man cheated on the spouse, and then they apparently found forgiveness, but the spouse was like holding over him yeah. that he did that. How do you free yourself from that and still try to be an example? Yeah, that's tough because because that means that the spouse itself needs to heal, mm. right? That it doesn't matter what he or she does. It's like if the other spouse hasn't healed, they're mm. always gonna keep seeing you through the lenses of their hurt, yeah. you know what I mean? So you have to pray for the other spouse to find the same healing that you found. Wow. So that now, because like we always say, hurt people will always hurt people, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like now we're both in that healing process, right. which means that I need to give you grace and space mm -hmm. to do that and pray that you also can do the same for me. Yeah. But it's easier said than done, right? Mm -hmm. When the hurt is there, it's, it's, it's tough. That's why sometimes you need, you know, a, a third voice, like a counselor, you yeah. know, or a therapist to kind of help bring healing and kind of bring perspective. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we have those blind sides where all we're seeing is the hurt. We're yeah. not seeing that he's made a lot of progress. Yeah. So it's like, it's healthy to have outside voices so that can help you speak into that and, and also bring perspective. Because again, our hurt 
just skews the perspective that we're seeing. Sure. But again, it's easier said than done when, yeah. when you're the one hurt. Yeah, facts. You know? It's like being in war, but you have to be the one to be like, I'm willing to walk this out with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and still, you can still hit me. <laughs> Absolutely. Not easy. <laughs> yeah, not easy. Man, this is blessing. So we got a bonus question. We're going to end off lighthearted. Um, I know you've gotten this a lot, and I think it's a compliment because you're a great communicator, so it means you're a great writer. Um, when are you writing another book, or do you have an idea for a oh, next man. book? I, I genuinely don't feel like I'm a good writer, honestly. Like I feel <laughs> like I don't even know how I was able to write Untangled Jesus from Religion. So I don't have a, a plan. I would love to write another book. Of, <laughs> you got ideas about know, ideas. Um, I've always wanted to write a book called Be Intentional. Mm. You know, like living out your faith on purpose. Oh, that's good. Um, but I feel like that's just like a one page thing. It's like, be intentional. Just <laughs> that's about it. everything, you know. But I would love to be able to lay out a, a book like that, like all the areas, how to be yeah. intentional in every single area yeah. of your life to reflect that you are a follower of Jesus. So mm. I don't know. That's just a thought, oh. you know, but... Uh, I don't consider myself a writer, to be honest. <laughs> I got an idea. When you, oh, I think you already have a book for it, verses that don't make it devotional. <laughs> those are fun. Yeah. I don't know who's, who will read those. Yeah. You know. I'll take one. I'll take one. <laughs> like uh, based on the Book of Leviticus, you know, <laughs> yeah. numbers. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Well, thank you, Pastor. It means a lot that you've um, sharing your wisdom, knowledge, and experience. It means a lot. Um, I'm definitely a student here, so thank you for pouring into us. Awesome. Appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this, we're so glad you're tuning in. Again, if you have any questions, you can download our New Life South Coast app on the App Store or Android, and you can submit questions through there. It's going to be on the main page, and then you can go from there. Well, God bless you. Hope you have a great day.